Let's do an A-level physics paper three practice question. A motorcyclist riding on a level track is told to stop via a radio microphone in his helmet. The distance D traveled from this instant and the initial speed V are measured from a video recording. Explain why a student predicts that V and D are related by this equation. So D over here is the stopping distance, which is the sum of the thinking distance, which is just VT and the V squared over two A will be the braking distance. For stopping distance, we actually use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, but now our final speed is zero. Our initial speed was given to be v squared, and then because we are decelerating, it will be minus 2a times by the uh, braking distance. Oops, this here should say braking. Let's correct that. Let's call that the subscript B for breaking distance. So 2A dB is equal to V squared, meaning that the breaking distance dB will be V squared over 2A. So adding those up, we get the breaking distance plus thinking distance is equal to this expression. The student decides to plot a graph of D over V on the Y axis and V on the X axis. Explain why this is a sensible decision. So if we plot a graph of D over V, what we're going to get is, let's just divide everything by V. V squared over 2A will just give me V over 2A. I'm going to write this as 1 over 2A multiplied by V plus a factor of T. Well, underneath, I'm going to write Y is equal to MX plus C. So this relationship will give a straight line for the origin. If D over V is on the Y axis, V is on the X axis, my gradient will be given by 1 over 2a, and my intercept will just be given by the time t. And because this is an explanation question, I'm going to say that the graph will produce a straight line. And this is because, as well, a and t are constant. Remember, in this case, t is not the time as it's sticking along, but it's just simply the thinking distance, which is roughly set. Or in this case, we'll just presume that it's actually set. Okay, now the measured values of V and D are given in the table. We have V plus or minus a value, D plus or minus a value, and then what we need to find is D over V with its uncertainty. My first job in this case is simply to figure out what D over V is. Well, this one here is quite easy. It's going to be 13 over 10. So I'm going to have to be quite careful and conserve decimal places. So 13 over 10 is just going to be 1.30. Now, what will my uncertainty be? Well, we actually need to calculate that. Because we are dividing quantities, what we need to do is add the percentage uncertainties. And I'm going to do this just on the side here. The percentage uncertainty in D will be given by 0.5 over 13 plus the percentage uncertainty in V, which is going to be 1 over 10. Multiply this by 100. This gives us 0.13846 times by 100. I know I'm giving quite a lot of decimal places. So uh, tell you what, let's find this as a percentage, which is around 13%. So I'm just going to take this decimal value, 0.138, and then I'm going to multiply this by 1.3. And that gives us 0.18. So the value that should go in here is plus or minus 0.18. You can also do that with absolute uncertainties, half the range. You'll probably get a very similar result. Let me know if you've done it this way. Okay, complete the missing value of D over V in the table, include the absolute uncertainties. And we're going to do that with the use of an error bar. Okay, so D over V should be equal to 1.30. Okay, this here is our point with coordinates of D over V being 1.30 and V being 10. Now, 
what we need to plot is the uncertainty as well. So we know that the uncertainty in D over V is 0.18. So we need to apply an appropriate error bar. So the length of one square was 0 0.05. So that means that the total length is gonna be just under two error bars in either direction. Something like this. I think we've got one more point missing. Let's have a look. Yeah, we have one more point plot, which is gonna be at V at 15 and then 24. No, 1.63 plus or minus 0.14. Okay, and our uncertainty in this one is plus or minus 0.14. So that means that the total length of the error bars in both directions will be almost three error bars. So we've got just under about an error bar and a half in either direction. Remember, the length of an error bar in either direction from the point is half of the absolute uncertainty. And we also want to complete the table. So this means that we are going to need to draw our line of best fit. So the rule is that we need to go through all of the error bars and we need to try and make sure that we have a good number of points on either side of the graph. Can I actually go through all of them? Just a about maybe so something like this is actually going to be quite all right so i have one on this side one through another one through another one on this side and then two more or less through so i'm quite happy with this one it's probably going to be within the range to determine the values of a and t first of all before we even do the uncertainties i am going to need to actually calculate the gradient and the intercept so shall we start off with the actual intercept? So this is just about here. So what is that going to be? One, two, three. So the intercept is just about 0 0.60, hopefully within the range. Now my gradient, which is going to be delta y over delta x. Remember, you want to make your gradient over a very, very large triangle. So it needs to be over half of the points on the graph. And we also want to take points from the graph itself. Using those points, I have exactly a gradient of 0 0.065. So we can say that my gradient was 0 0.065. Intercept C was 0 0.60. So we can actually see that my gradient is equal to 1 over 2a in the previous part of the problem. So we can work out the acceleration, which is going to be 1 over 2 times the gradient. This here is going to give us 7.69. Let's call it 7.7 .7 meters per second squared. And we'll talk about the uncertainty in that value in a minute. Now, our time was basically the intercept, wasn't it? So this here will just be around 0 0.60. Now, how do we actually work out the uncertainties? Well, our uncertainty in the gradient will be equal to plus or minus uncertainty that we can determine from the graph. So Tio, let's write the formula first because this here is really important. The percentage uncertainty in the gradient is equal to m best, take away m worst, over m best times by 100. So how do we actually draw the line of worst fit? Should we just plot that in red maybe? Well, I tend to remember bottom of the bottom error bar to the top of the top error bar. So this here, you can also do it the other way around, but it's just a useful way to remember it. Let's see if I can just about do that on iPad. So something like this like so. So something like this should do. And this here is our line of worst fit. If you're doing AQA, this here will be known as Gmax, but it's exactly the same thing. 
so we have that now shall we see if we can find the gradient of the line of worst fit so i'm just going to do this on the same page over here okay i have these values here for the intercept and for the worst gradient they're slightly different to the ones in the mark scheme however this here is from a specimen paper without an actual range given within the within the gradient okay so our percentage uncertainty in the gradient will be given by m best which was 0 0.065 take away m worst which was 0 0.072 Divide that by M best, which is 0 0.065. Multiply this by 100. Tell you what, uh, this here, when we put that into a calculator, is going to be around 10.77%. Okay, so in terms of 10.77%, this here will be the percentage uncertainty in our value for the acceleration. So we can do 10.77, divide that by 100, multiply this by 7.7. .7. And this here will just give us around 0.83 or so. So let's just say 7.7 .7 plus or minus 0.8 meters per second. To work out the uncertainty in the intercept is going to be a little bit easier because the our formula for the uncertainty in the intercept we don't even need to do the percentage uncertainty we can just say that the uncertainty in the intercept c is just equal to c uh, best take away c worst and our C best was 0 0.60, and our C worst is 0 0.45. D, it was suspected the method used to determine the distance D included a zero error. The distance recorded by the student was larger than it should have been. Discuss how this would affect the actual value of T obtained in part C. Okay. Well, if you think about it, if those results included a zero error, then the actual results will all be a little bit lower. But each of them, because this is a systematic error, will be lower by the same amount. So the gradient will be unchanged, but the actual intercept value would be lower. And the value of the intercept is lower because our intercept was essentially our thinking distance t, then the actual value of t should be smaller as well. Okay, folks, I hope this has been useful in your paper three preparation. I'm going to leave yet another important preparation question for paper three. Have a look right over here. This will be really useful. Good luck preparing.